Welcome back, I'm Ray Ortega, and I wanted to give you my first impressions of the Canon M6. Has Canon secretly made possibly the best vlogging camera available? I think maybe yes. So this is the Canon M6. I've only had it for a few days, but I've been taking it everywhere. When I'm not working, I'm out shooting with this camera. All right, I'm back at the park. Same settings on the camera, different day. And so far, it's super enjoyable to shoot on. But I talk about vlogging because one reason I like measuring cameras against vlogging, a vlogging format, is because if it can do everything I need it to do in a vlogging situation, then I know I can get everything I need out of it as a regular camera with manual control. Because vlogging can be challenging. You're constantly changing environments and scenes and things have to be done automatically. So if it can handle that, then it can handle anything I need it to do. Now, so far when it comes to vlogging cameras, I am looking for some very specific things that I am surprised you have not seen yet. Obviously you're seeing the Canon M6 here with the Rode Video Micro on top. That'll become important. But let me give you a quick list of what I'm looking for for the quote unquote perfect, there is no such thing, but everything I want in a vlogging camera. So first up is size, mirrorless, extremely compact, so I can easily take this everywhere I go. And it's not a big giant cumbersome thing if I'm holding it out and I'm vlogging on it. Obviously the image has to be good. This does 1080p, it's not 4K like my Sony a6500, which I'm actually shooting on right now because I only have one of these with me. But the M6 looks good at 1080 and in a vlog scenario, 1080 is plenty, it works great. Let's you edit faster, lets you export faster, smaller file sizes. So for vlogging, I like 1080. And the low light of this camera seems decent. I will compare that more or look at that more in a review vlog, but so far so good. Related to that 1080p, I want it to shoot 60 frames a second. A lot of vloggers shoot at 60 frames a second so they can get that nice looking slow motion. So I can shoot 60 frames and when I wanna slow down the footage, it's going to look nice in slow motion. You're gonna have those extra frames to work with. So that's a popular sort of thing to do in vlogs and I enjoy mixing in slow motion with regular 24p footage. I talked about automatic settings. It needs to have good autofocus. So in a vlog setup, I need it to follow my face, which you can see it's doing that. You can see the tracking right there on the camera. As I change focal distance, it keeps me in focus. And as I move around, it follows my face really well. So this has got fantastic autofocus because it's really an 80D, a Canon 80D, which you've seen on this channel, inside a mirrorless body. There's not a lot of difference. And in fact, I think the sensor in here is a little better. So you get the fantastic autofocus that Canon has developed as good as my Sony a6500. And Canon actually has led the way with continuous autofocus for video. So you've got that built right in and it works great. Of course, in a vlogging setup, I want an articulating screen. So that doesn't just mean going down. It means 180 degrees or a flip screen. I need it to come up and flip so that you can easily see yourself when you're vlogging. You can see focus, exposure, framing. Those things are important. I could touch the focus because this has a touch screen as well. So you get that in this camera, but that might be its one, I won't say fatal flaw, but it's a big problem because one of the other things I really want in a vlogging camera this is what you don't see in a mirrorless camera, a microphone input. Yes, there are microphone inputs in other mirrorless cameras. The key here and the other ingredient in my ideal vlogging camera is it's sub $1,000. So you can get in at a great price with all of these features, mic input. Again, you've got, I've got the Rode Video Micro up top, but here's the problem. The hot shoe where you're gonna mount the microphone is on top and you can see the video micro. I can push that all the way forward, but no matter what, with this piece right here, you can't make the screen go completely vertical. So what happens is 
it won't flip. And on top of that, the other problem, which is more obvious, is when this flip screen is up, your microphone is blocking everything, almost everything. This one you can see through a little bit. I could deal with that, but it's just not good. The problem is it's not flipping the image because it's not making full vertical here. And that's being blocked by this. And almost any microphone you're gonna put up there is going to create that problem. So you've got the hot shoe up here in your mic input. The problem is the flip screen needs to be flush like that. And that is not going to happen when you have almost any microphone up top there. So two of the things I really, really want in a vlog camera is that 180 degree screen and a microphone. In fact, they kind of can't decide what they want their flip screen to be. In the M5, it flips down underneath the camera. M6, cool, they've gone up. I like that because in the flip down version of the M5, you block putting it onto a tripod. So I guess maybe they decided let's go flip up, but now we got a mic input. You're gonna put a microphone there, that's blocked. All the other cameras, my 60D that I've shot on for so long on this channel, the 70D, the 80D, they all flip out this way. All the Rebel cameras flip out this way. If they had done that, it would have been perfect. It would have solved everything. And this would be just about perfect at that point so far because I'm loving using it. In fact, even in spite of this, I think it still is probably the best vlogging camera. We have a full touch screen, everything you wanna do. So anytime I think about how would I do that, it's very easy to find things in the menu and the touch screen lets me get to everything really quickly and it's intuitive. This camera has kind of snuck into the market. It gives me really all those features that I've been looking for in a sub 1000 compact mirrorless camera. Interchangeable lenses too. This is the kit lens. 15 to 45 is a nice focal length. I also have the 22 F2, which I will use when I go out and shoot some low light stuff, but it's the M series lens and it's STM. So it's quiet when you get that autofocus. So it's not even pick, being picked up when I have that microphone on top there. So it's got all the things I want. I just have to solve that mic issue. And really it's a perfect camera. In-body image stabilization. This does not have that necessarily. It has a digital form of that. So the sensor is not floating. It does it digitally. And that's still nice to have because I can, if I need to put on a lens that is not image stabilized and I will get some assistance with that. So when I'm shooting shots, you know, I don't know about when I'm walking on stuff like that, how good that's going to look. But for me, image stabilization really just needs to take out the jitter that you get where the image shakes a little bit when you're holding like this. So hold your camera properly and it'll take out that little bit of shake. The difference between the video looking almost what I would say amateur and something more professional. It does make a huge difference. The kit lens that I have on here, the 15 to 45, actually is image stabilized. And I believe it works in concert with the in-body stabilization. So it makes it really nice. I, judging from the back of the LCD screen, the video is really stable. So I'm enjoying that as well. And because for vlogs, I tend to shoot in shutter priority where I set the shutter speed and the camera does the aperture and I put the ISO on auto. New Orleans, Louisiana. I think I've got, yep, auto ISO. I can see it in the screen. I like to knock down the exposure comp. I find that that helps. And there's a real handy exposure compensation manual dial up here, which for me has been pretty helpful because I can quickly just dial it down. If I see that it's still overexposed with those couple auto settings, I can quickly just grab the dial and change exposure compensation to dial in the image I need. All right, that's my first impression of the Canon M6. I'm enjoying shooting on it. Subscribe, come back, learn more about the Canon M6, and of course, all the other audio and video stuff that I look at on this channel, and I will see you next time.